Hey. All right. Hello, you, guys. I am Tara from livingonadime.com, the author of Dining on a Dime Cookbooks. 25% off right now. We are making cheeseburger soup in today's video. This is in our volume two of our book. And you can get our books at livingonadime.com over here, Dave. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your butter. Oh, we're Oops, starting I right up. pan was on. You're gonna take your butter and you're gonna put it in your pan. All right, like so, and get that melted. And then you're gonna add your ground beef. Now this is my prepackaged ground beef that's already been cooked, but not browned, okay? So I'm putting that in there. And I'm adding my celery. Oh, Dave, can you hand me an onion? And my carrots, just like so. And we're gonna put all this in and get it all brown and nice. And then you can add your basil and your parsley. Thank you for my forgotten onion. All right, now this recipe is fairly quick. I mean, it's 10, 15 minutes, it takes about 10, 20, 20 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes if you're browning your hamburger, I'm not, so probably cut five minutes off for me. Okay, I hope everyone is doing good today. Alrighty, so now I'm going to cut up my onion in here and get it into little pieces while my butter is melting and we're gonna get all of this browned, okay? Now, this recipe, you can adjust it to however you want. You don't like celery or your kids don't like celery and you don't wanna sneak the vegetables in for your kids, then leave it out. If you don't like um, American cheese or Velveeta, you can swap out cheddar cheese if you want. You could use a combination of cheeses. You could do mozzarella and cheddar if you want. That's always a really good combination. So just go ahead and make it however you want. Now this is kind of like, a, have you heard of the loaded baked potato mm. soup? It's kind of similar to this. Okay, so now we're gonna get all this cooking, hopefully. All right, give me some questions, guys, while we're watching this cook. So, Elizabeth has the question that I was wondering if somebody would ask. Yeah. Can you put it in the crock pot? Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. So how would you do that since it calls for you to do multiple steps in the recipe? Well, so what I would do is I would do, you guys know how I pre-brown my hamburger and put it in the little, um, in the little packets and freeze it. I would take a hamburger packet of browned hamburger already and then just add everything in there and don't put in your, um, don't put in your, uh, milk products, of course, but really guys, why would you want to do this in the crock pot? I mean, it takes 20, 25 minutes, 20 minutes if your hamburger's already brown to make. So that's where, okay, let's talk about that for just a little bit. I'm actually going to be doing a video. <laughs> I got yet another person today in my prepping video on things you shouldn't prep. And uh, yet another comment today. Yeah, but I thought you could can flour. Okay, yes, you can can flour. But why would you do that? It's absolutely Wait, crazy. And it's kind of the same thing Wait, with putting some foods in the crock pot. Don't make things harder than they need to be. A lot of crock pot dinners you can do in the oven or on the stove top with a lot less time than dinking around with the crock pot. Um, 
I mean, this takes 20 minutes to make this. If your hamburger's already browned, and 25 minutes if your hamburger's not browned. So, the crock pot isn't always the easiest way to save time in the kitchen. I know people, psychologically, they think it is, but I use my crock pot probably six times a year, maybe six times a year. Mm, I love raw potatoes. Who is with me on the raw potatoes? Give me a thumbs up, guys. <laughs> um, and I never spend more than 20 or... Occasionally I'll spend 30 minutes, but I mean, my goodness, that's got to be a special night if I'm spending 30 minutes cooking dinner. Usually it's around 10 to 20 minutes that I do for dinner. So... My whole point of that is to say, stop making more work for yourself. Just because somebody says the crock pot is quicker, doesn't necessarily mean that it is, okay? All right, now, get this all browned up here, simmer. I didn't have my pan. This maybe wasn't the best pan to do this in. I. Uh, I need to get me a different show cooking cooking setup here, but um, not sure what I should do on that. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and put in my potatoes just so that those will start cooking too. All right, let me put the lid on it here. Just get the heat going. Okay, any other questions, dear? While this is getting the heat going. Uh, so far, I haven't come across questions, but a, a variety of people saying either, yes, they love raw potatoes, or they've Yay! never tried them before. Oh, raw potatoes are delicious. Somebody said with salt and pepper. Do you... I do it with salt now and then. I never thought about pepper, but I'll, I'll eat a raw potato with salt, but I'll just eat a potato. Um, another tip on this I forgot to mention is you can cook however much, three, six, seven, the whole package <laughs> of bacon beforehand. You can do bacon too and um, leave the bacon grease in there and use that in place of butter if you would like. That is really good too. So um, I don't have any bacon right now or that would be going in there and also if you look in volume two it's on page 122 the yellow or the yellow the red is red onion I didn't use red onion but the red is red onion in there so you can use red onion if you would like <laughs> so all right yeah I think we got our heat going up here Okay, so then what you're gonna do, you get all this going. My hamburger's already cooked. You can brown it more if you want, it's up to you. I might go ahead and brown these just a little bit more. Lisa says raw potatoes are the bomb. <laughs> Aren't they good? I mean, I just absolutely love them. And I don't know. Have you ever heard of the potato diet? Ooh, I would love to go on that diet. What? I would go on a potato diet tomorrow. You. But I don't know why I don't. I guess I could. <laughs> but all right. <laughs> Get all my cheese. Now this calls for American cheese or Velveeta. I personally think it tastes best with that. But I ran out, so I'm doing a combination of Velveeta, these are Velveeta slices, and cheddar. And so you can do whichever ever one you want. And don't forget guys, the smaller you dice up your potato, the uh, quicker, quicker it will cook. And... I think we're getting close here. What's the potato diet? 
What's the potato diet? Oh, you guys haven't heard of the potato diet? Yep. Oh, man. It's mm -hmm. like the best diet in the whole wide world. No, I don't know. I'm just kidding. Um, okay, bring the camera to me while this is getting brown, Dave. So, but the potato diet... <laughs> The potato diet is this, I don't know if this guy invented it or what, but this well, guy a few years ago, he decided to lose weight, so he was only going to eat potatoes with only salt for his whole diet. He lost like 100 pounds or something in a year, or I don't know, it was really quick. <clears throat> so this guy made the potato diet famous by losing a whole bunch of weight really quick. So Shelly said, I thought raw potatoes give you a tummy ache. No. I've never eaten them just because they're hard. No. They're hard. It's like eating an apple. Uh, well, you know me and apples. <laughs> Wait, what? You don't like apples? Oh, I, I like them, but I don't usually eat them whole. But. So, Carol Ann, this is a knife that I got off of Amazon. It's a Mercer knife, and it works great. But let me tell you, this is the knife that I tried to lop my finger off at Christmas four weeks ago. Um, I was using it for the second time. My hand slipped, and... You can hardly see right there. Uh, my hand slipped and I went clear down and I heard a thunk. And I am pretty sure I hit the bone. Pretty sure I hit the bone. And I, it took about an hour and a half before it actually stopped bleeding. I had to hold pressure on it for an hour and a half to get it to stop bleeding. And I probably should have gotten gone stitches, but it was Christmas Day, and I didn't want stitches and all that, so I just held it tight because it was really clean. But Kathy texted me, and she said, Tara, I have the thing for you. And it was called Meta Honey. I'd never heard of it. She said, this will heal it right up. And let me tell you, you can't even see. You can't even see right here. Can you see right uh, there? There's a slight red. Well, you can't even hardly see where it was slashed. And, I mean, I whacked that baby good. That so, Goshen is on. Hello, <laughs> Eric! Oh, it's the hoarders. What? <laughs> oh, they got stupid people calling them hoarders. Uh, okay, Dave, come over here. Now, next what you're going to do is you're going to add your potatoes and your chicken broth. I went ahead and just put my potatoes in. And there's my chicken broth. And you're just going to let this simmer just for another couple of minutes until your potatoes are cooked. Okay? Now, a lot of people will take and put another pan with butter and flour. But here's what I'm going to do because I don't believe in dirtying extra pans <laughs> I just put my flour in some water and I just take and get all the lumps out that way and I know you're supposed to cook the flour and all this other baloney but I don't waste time with that and everybody loves it so the trick to not having lumps in your food your gravies your hamburgers, your all, or I mean your hamburger gravies, your sausage gravies, all of that. The secret is mix your flour or your cornstarch corn in water beforehand and get the lumps out. Don't put your flour just straight in the pan. A lot of people do that. That's why they have nasty lumpy gravy. Ugh. So that's why they don't like it. So for those who are just joining us, what are we making tonight? Cheeseburger soup from Dining on a Dime Cookbook, Volume 2, page... Okay, Volume 2, right there. Page 122. 
And we are 25% off right now, guys. 25% off right now. Is this supposed to be? Yes. Did you think it was getting ready to explode? I thought Santa was going to Dave was like, oh no, what am well, I going to have to make sure I catch pot, today? With the Instant Pot, it wasn't supposed to be in there. <laughs> oh, it's starting to smell really good. Uh, Elizabeth would like to know how many does this normally serve? This serves quite a few. I would say six to eight. Probably six. Ooh, Tammy is on. We. Your cousin. Oh! Hey, cuz! <laughs> how are you? Um... What was I going to say about this? Something important. Oh, yeah. We don't put serving sizes because it just depends on how big of a serving you do. Quite frankly, I think serving sizes are almost not usable now because yeah. if someone weighs 350, 400 pounds, they're going to eat two or three serving sizes. Compared to someone else who is a hundred pounds, they'll eat a half a serving size. And so a teenager who's really active. And then, also. but yeah. you can just adjust this if you need more. Then just add more potatoes. You can just add a few more potatoes, a few more um, milk and cheese, and then there you go. Okay, it's not really hard. Uh -oh. All right, oh. let's see. Sorry, guys. All right, let's see my potatoes. There we go. They're done, I think, basically. All right. Pour in my salt. Get my salt in there, because the world needs more salt, people. If you want pepper, you can put pepper in there. Okay, so now we're going to add the flour. We're going to bring it back to a boil. And my pan is not big enough. <laughs> oh, I gotta love it. Okay, so we're going to bring this to boil and thicken it for just a second. And cook that flour for just a second before we add the milk and the cheese so the milk and the cheese doesn't curdle. Now I'm going to have one extremely full pan here. But that's okay. All right, bring it back to a boil. Any other questions, dear? While we're bringing this to a boil, um, about the food or something else? It doesn't matter, I guess. Um, quite a number of people were asking, "What is Meta Honey? Where do you get Meta Honey?" Um, okay, go to Michael. Get an Amazon link. But this is not a doctor's. This is not a doctor's thing or anything. But I burned this finger right there and I put it on as after I put it in cold water I put the meta honey on and it didn't um, blister or anything I was really surprised but Michael get a link here on Amazon keep going it's that one right there now it's a little tiny bottle it's only like this but don't, so don't freak out use it sparingly you're not gonna put a half an inch layer on your wounds you're gonna put it on there sparingly but, guys, I nearly chopped my finger off four weeks ago. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? So, yeah, I mean, I just am totally shocked. All right, so we're bringing this back to a boil real quick. And so, Kathy's an EMT, and she just told me about it. She said that her husband had has diabetes, and they used it to fix the sores on his feet. And it healed the sores on his feet really well. Okay. Come on. Let's get going. I don't like doing this because it takes so much longer than the stove top that I usually, I would have probably been done with this by now, but it's okay. <laughs> Bring it back up to a boil. Okay. Any other questions, dear? Uh, sorry. I'm just, I'm just finally sharing that link. <laughs> it took me a second to grab it. Uh, let's see. Well, the set says your hair looks great. Aw, thanks. You guys here, come here, Dave. All right, come here. Oh, you guys know. like my gnome headband? Can you see it? Can Isn't that there? cute? Yep. And then on this side, I have a little mushroom. Yep. Isn't that cute? 
One of our viewers sent that to me. You guys know I'm a lover of all things gnomes. Uh, Cindy wants to know, love your coffee mug. Where did you purchase it? I think it's that one right there. <laughs> the thrift store. Oh no. But Give me the look I got it from the thrift store, but it's from World Market. But I've been to World Market since then, and I haven't ever seen one since since then. Uh, okay. And there are... Kasha and Shelly both say it's their first time on the show today. Well, welcome. Hey, we're glad you're here. Welcome, welcome. Okay, that's not thickening like I would like. So... Oh. Ooh, Dr. Jeremy says 31 years old and debt-free. That's brilliant. Hey, you go. Let me tell you, debt-free is the only way to go. And if you are debt-free right now, I would get debt-free quick. Because you are certainly going to need it here pretty soon. Um, it will... You know, it's funny because every time there's a recession... Mom and I were just talking about this the other day. We noticed that we never notice. Because I just added a little, I added arrowroot just so I didn't have to crawl over Mike to get the flour, but, all right. Wait, what? You never noticed what about this? Um, we never noticed recessions were happening because when we're debt free, you don't have to worry about it. It's so nice that when something like happened in 2020, it doesn't affect you as much because you are prepared and you are ready. And I don't think I'm going to have enough room to put my milk in. Wow. Maybe <laughs> okay. I really stuff. should have done this on the stove top, but then you guys couldn't see what's going on. Okay, so then I'm just adding the rest of the cheese as um, shredded cheese because I ran out of... Belvita, my boys, were eating their nachos. Nacho nachos. Let's do it this way just so we don't spill over. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. All right, I am almost done with this, so you guys give us your questions in the queue, and Mike will pull them out. Oh, dear. Okay, Diana Dime Volume 2. This is the cheeseburger soup. Yumalicious. All right, now we've got our cheese almost totally melted right there. And now, oh, what a nice brother Dave. Now we're going to add our milk. <laughs> and then we're going to have Mike test it here. Ooh, yum, my favorite part. All right. And that's it, guys. I mean, my goodness, it is so super simple that... Check that out. Um, your kids could make it if you wanted them to. Wait, can you, can you say it doesn't matter? So okay. Oh, sorry. I'm just saying this was just super, super simple. All right, there you go. And then if you wanted to put... Uh, then if you wanted to put some sour cream in, you can. If you want bacon. Ooh. Or if you would like... Um, Green onions, anything like that, serve with crackers and a, or a loaf of homemade no need bread if you want. You don't have to do that, but toast. That's one thing. My grandma, she served toast with every single meal and everybody loved toast with every single meal. It was funny because <laughs> Brother Dave, there's something in the in the road. <laughs> he walked all the way around it. No, he's walking. David between, laid a blanket on the floor. He walks and it was between funny. the table because people feed him. Uh, he walked all the way around it. Okay, let's see if we're cool. I don't know. I hope I don't burn the hide off of your mouth. 
Do you need water? Is it too hot? Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Is it good? Mm-hmm. No, it's not good. too hot. It's perfect. Better be good. It's really this good. This would be like a loaded baked potato. Okay, show's over. Mike's going to go eat now. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> oh. Yum. Okay. I miss dairy. Odd minute. Now. You're not supposed to be eating it. Everybody's going to ask me, can you make this gluten-free, dairy-free? Yes, you can. Just use cornstarch instead of flour. Use rice milk instead of regular milk and use dairy-free cheese instead of regular cheese. All right. Well, let's see. Sandra says, I got two of the cutest gnomes for Christmas. I love them. Think I might start buying some more. Yeah, I had to resist yesterday because I went to Dollar Tree to do two videos and <laughs> gnomes. gnomes. they had gnomes. <laughs> but I was like, Tara, you are moving. You don't need more gnomes. And then my other part of my brain was like, Tara, well, it's got five more it doesn't plans. matter. Look at, see my new decorations on my computer there. My other one got worn out. Oh, Happiness Naturally is wondering, do you think this soup would taste okay with dairy-free cheese? I love this soup, but I'm supposed to go dairy-free. Yeah, it, you can use dairy-free cheese. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, I want to read, we got some mail. So first of all, thank you, Barbara Polly, for Wendy's oh. and the beautiful Christmas card. Ooh, oh, thank you. Time. And... This is from Gail, which I'm going to have to use next week. Thank you, Gail. That is adorable. <laughs> What's the top part say? Oh, to gnome you and still have you. Isn't that <laughs> That's cute? Brilliant. Thank you so much, Gail. I'm going to use that for, Hall or for Valentine's Day. And then I got this letter from... Sandra, and I just wanted to read your letter. Hi, Tara. I just wanted to say thank you for your gracious mom and your gracious mom for sharing your tips, accomplishments, and challenges. I'm sure that you have fans. Your fans have learned so much. I have also enjoyed all of your financial advice. It's helped me a lot. Enclosed, find my latest shopping receipt for groceries. I was pretty proud of myself. I am on the full Tara plan. I didn't know I had a plan. <laughs> I got 52 pieces of meat plus two huge full chickens and other groceries for a dollar, for a dollar, for a hundred and three dollars. I am one person in my household, so this covers my meals for four months. To all the naysayers, it can be done in exclamation points and bold. See right there. Whoa, cool. I live in one of the most ho expensive housing areas in California. I'm so sorry. <laughs> the typical home value is $621,000. This is adjusted seasonally and is the middle of the price of homes. But there are bargains to be had and ways to save, and you can live luxuriously frugal life if only you tried the full Tara plan. It works. Love, Sandra. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Sandra. I'm telling you, I'm going to go on a road tour, and I'm going to go to every state and grocery shop in the most expensive spot in every state and show them it can be done. Uh, Teresa is asking, does, she says shredded cheese has gluten, correct? No, not all of it. Some does. Mm -mm. It depends on what they put Mo on. Most of it doesn't have it now, but some does and some doesn't. So you just need to, uh, look at the ingredients, but a lot of shredded cheese does not now. <clears throat> so just <clears throat> look at yours and see. So if you're celiac, of course you need to be really careful if you're like me and just sensitive it's not going to kill me to it's not going to kill me i mean it makes me sick but it's not going to kill me so <laughs> nanny nanny j21 jean says that headband is so stinking adorable <laughs> thank you i love it Actually, I noticed it right away, and I was like, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> um, Sandra, Tara, are you loving not having to color your hair? It looks really pretty. Yes, I am. I, 
actually, so I tried doing this six years ago. And somebody had a cow about it. Wait, so I went back to coloring my hair. Oh. And so I'd been going on and off. Well, I had bought, when I go to the store, I'll buy like five boxes of hair color at once just because I get tired. I don't like going to the store that often. I go once a month. But certain things that I know that I'm going to use the same thing of, I'll just get several. And hair color is one of those things. So what I did was back in, it would have been like September or October of 2019, I happened to buy like five boxes of hair color. And it just so happened that I ran out and it coincided with COVID. So I didn't do it because of COVID. I've always colored my own hair. Well, except after the one time I tried it and she turned my hair orange. Wait, was that the I, term? No, that was a different time. Oh. Um, after she turned my hair orange, I just always colored my hair myself. I started going gray when I was 30 after Dave was born. Wow. <laughs> so, Did the kids do it to you? Yep. Or your husband? <laughs> I should never have put that out there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, questions. so the next question is... <laughs> Wait, uh, Elizabeth asks, uh, how do you get your kids to not be so picky and eat what you make? Um, I don't know. When you find the answer, let me know. I was one of those... First of all, you don't say before you have kids, I'm never having picky kids. So I said before I had kids, I'm never having picky kids. Don't ever say my kids will never insert anything here. <laughs> so, but yeah, my whole people. entire family is picky. Well, Ellie's not, and Jack's pretty good. Okay. Mike, BJ, Dave are picky. But Mike. here's the thing. What my rule was, I made them try one bite of everything on dinner. When they were little, I would put like a tablespoon on there and made them try it. If they didn't want to eat everything on their plate, which I put like one or two tablespoons of each item, and they had to finish their plate. If they didn't want to finish their plate, they got nothing else to eat for the rest of their night. That's the rule that I did. So it's fine if they chose not to eat those things and they didn't like those things, but I wasn't going to let them eat anything else until the next meal. You can argue with me on how I'm a horrible mother all you want. It's fine. That's what I did. Oh, I didn't kill them. In hard. fact, it's funny to hear their stories about it. As a matter of fact, the biggest showdown we had was with Ellie when... Ellie and her bananas. Well, I tried to make her... She refused to eat bananas, so I forced her to eat one bite of bananas. I'm not kidding. We sat there like an hour and a half trying to get one thing of bananas down. Finally... It was time for nap. I was tired. I let her go, and she says she spit it out in the toilet or sink or something. I don't know. Nowadays, Probably the toilet. Is, what's yeah. funny is so, she kept it in her mouth that whole time. whole time. She kept it in her mouth that whole time instead of just swallowing. Literally, it was like this much banana. <laughs> so. Well, and she told me recently, she's 22 now. She said, I think maybe I'll have to try them now. Yeah. She, she told me recently that she would never... I got a banana yogurt, and she would. She said, I'm never going to do that. And then she said, maybe I should try them. I see all these people at the gym with a banana, and she said, it seems like they're cheap and easy to transport. I was yeah. like, yeah, and actually, I think that she doesn't, it's not that she doesn't like them. It's that when she was little, sometimes kids just look at something and say, I don't like that, without ever trying it. And I don't think she's ever actually tried it, really. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Lisette was asking, can you use coconut milk? And I'm thinking she means in this. In I wouldn't. I would use rice or soy, maybe oatmeal milk, but I would do rice or soy. Coconut milk would probably make it sweet, right? And that would yeah. make coconut it Yeah, coconut milk would make it... Coconut... You got to be careful when you're switching out milks. Coconut milk gives a strange flavor to regular foods. You need a bland flavor like rice or soy, possibly oatmeal oats or oats oat soap oh my goodness oat milk um might might work is he okay do you need help um okay uh 
so yeah um brandon said this might be weird on this recipe he's but i would probably add some relish i love dill relish and cheeseburger macaroni Ugh. you know i wouldn't okay. think that would taste very good but if you like it in that it might be interesting to try it well, you can try. I'd probably put a little bit of it in some kind of a separate. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> Rosemary, when are you moving? No. Where are you moving and when? Uh, we you, you don't know and we don't know. I can't figure out how to get up this little piece. I can't see anything at Um, is he making it? Yay. Sorry. We're having, Buster is, is 17 and. Our dog. Our dog is 17, and he went outside, and he was having some issues getting back in. Is he okay? Yeah, he couldn't. Okay. Um, you had to think about it before you could get We are trying to move to Wyoming, but Wyoming, everybody from Colorado is fleeing to Wyoming. So it's just as bad as Colorado for prices. And so we are looking, um, we are looking, but we haven't found anything yet. Uh, El Gomez, wow, you should do a video shopping at an expensive grocery store like Whole Foods. That's it. I don't shop at gro I don't shop at places like Whole Foods. It's ridiculous. Those stores, I don't even know why they're even still in existence. But, well, I do know why because the economy isn't that bad. <laughs> but um, Whole Foods, I don't even, I went in there one time just to see what it was. I would never shop there. It, the prices are just absolutely ridiculous. So, would uh, we ever consider moving to Ohio? No. <laughs> sorry. sorry. Well, Too one, hot and humid. Well, I was going to say, the one thing that um, is our biggest no for most places is Tara, gets, Tara has a chronic illness and she gets sick from heat and or humidity. And if there's both, she gets really, really sick. So, yeah. that's, that's what's made it difficult in terms of finding a place to move. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> okay, my computer. Oh, thank you for the four ninety nine super chat, Lorena Rodriguez. I don't know how you say your first name, but thank you. Appreciate it. I, I bet I could pronounce it. Oh, okay, <laughs> Sorry. go ahead. Yes. Um, uh, actually, who was it about? Somebody said. Oh, I wonder there's something I wanted to see. Oh, uh, Patricia said made your beef stroganoff today and it was really great oh yeah our beef stroganoff volume one absolutely yes. love it this is one i wanted to share stephanie my husband and i paid off the last amount on the credit card and a medical bill Woo! you go that's awesome that is great and kathy said i cut the cable today 2021 equals frugality you know we cut the cable like in 2007 and we haven't missed it yeah. really at all um and yeah. karen said started by cutting cable losing landline changed cell phone to prepaid same service, but half the price. Bought a new to me car with only 33,000 miles for 4,000 cash. Mm -hmm. Now all credit cards and loans are paid off. Next, knock out the mortgage. That's exactly how you do it. Yeah. One little bit at a time. <clears throat> so if you're at the beginning and you think, man, I have credit, I have this debt and I'm tired of paying on it, um, don't get discouraged. Just do a little at a time. Yeah. Right? Music Mad says she uses coconut milk in her curry. Yes. In chicken curry, which is in volume two of Dining on a Dime Cookbook, use coconut milk. It's the best. But for other things, I would use um, oat or uh, rice or soy. Special K said, I caught my first live show. Glad you made it. <laughs> um, Kathy, growing up, my mom cooked the meal that she saw fit. We ate it or didn't. It had to wait till the next meal. There was no snacking between meals back in the day. 19. Yeah, that's the biggest problem nowadays is people just eat 24 hours a day. There are days I want to put locks on all of the cabinets and everything and just say, Mom's cooking meals, <clears throat> and we're doing that. In but the, we're not Kitchen that washer rack drawer, too. Yeah. <laughs> we're not that bad. But, Except yeah. For, let's see, we have half a stick of butter yeah. and it's gone. Yeah. So so are the neighbors <laughs> bothering us anymore? No, actually, well, I mean, their dogs still bark, but this year the dogs haven't been quite as bad because of COVID, everybody's home. And, and they so don't want to hear, their own they dogs don't hear the dogs barking. Whoa, well, wonder why not. Ooh, so they haven't been quite as bad this year. Here's an interesting question. If you get SSDI and mm -hmm. move to another state, does the amount change in your check? Not usually. I've lived in Texas, Kansas. No, not Kansas. Yes, 
Texas, Kansas, Colorado, Idaho. I've lived in four states, and it's been the same for all of those. Nanny Jean, come that's, to Alabama. That's <clears throat> federal. That's federal, not state. Yeah. Speaking from the mic perspective, that would be awesome. <laughs> it's mainly the heat and humidity thing for Tara. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The party I saw the video on Jane's, I was crying. <laughs> <laughs> Hugs to Buster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Poor Buster. Not sure how much longer he has. I know we've been saying that for a while, but he's starting to slow down. Denise wants to know which volume is the soup recipe in again? Volume two. The cheeseburger soup is in volume two today. So I'm going to share the links to that again. Um, let's see. Rachel says that's why she doesn't buy snacks in her house. Well, snacks in her house because she would eat all the time. Yeah. You know, and that's one of those things where um, it's a battle I've just given up on. When we were first married, I tried making all three meals for Mike, and that didn't work out. So I just finally gave up and kind of just went that direction then. So, yeah. But anyway. <laughs> gam, gam. I tried to get my three-year-old son to eat just one pea. Sat there for an, over an hour. <laughs> He's so picky at 36. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Abel says SSI may change. So SSI and SSDI are two different things. Social Security <clears throat> Disability and and so Supplemental Security, Social Security Income. Those One's state and one's federal. So that's why it's different. So Beth would like to know, I think the answer is yes, Beth. Can you substitute ground turkey for the ground beef in this recipe? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and don't use a full pound. I, the recipe calls for a half a pound, but the original recipe that I adapted this from had called for a full pound. Guys, when a recipe like soup or stroganoff or cheeseburger rolls or whatever, don't use a full pound of hamburger or turkey or whatever, use a half a pound. This has so much protein between the milk and the cheese and the hamburger. You don't need that extra ham. You use the hamburger as a flavoring and a condiment, not as a <clears throat> meat. So yeah. So anyway, yes, dear. Oh, actually, I was. That was just my throat clearing thing. Oh. Uh, Karen was talking about paying off her house, and she said, "I refi." I re somebody asked about it. She said, I refinance to a lower interest rate. Besides the other, I can put it on now. I will continue to pay the same amount, which will be about $500 for the principal instead of interest. And so what she's saying is, if you have a lot of money on your mortgage left, <clears throat> and if you'll get a, uh, especially if you get a, well, if, yeah, if you'll get a lower interest rate, you can refinance it. And then if you, your payment will go down. But if you pay the same amount you were paying before, then you're paying extra towards the principal. When we, re we refinanced one time, and at the time that we did, I did some math to figure out, because uh, when you refinance, there usually are fees uh, associated with that. Usually it's around $3,000, so it's, it's a big chunk of change <clears throat> you're adding to your mortgage. And at the time, I, I forgot how much, our mortgage was like $800 at the time, this was when we were in Kansas, and I think I figured it would take something like five or six months for us to pay the fees and the savings on the mortgage. So uh, we thought we'd be there longer than that, and we were. So it worked out well for us to refinance yeah. it. Uh, Heather I, Heather says, I looked flush. Have I, have I changed my colors? Well, to me, <laughs> you look about the same, but she hasn't been feeling very uh, good lately. I haven't been feeling very good. Found out yesterday that my thyroid is messed up. I gotta go for an ultrasound on Friday. And so I am having that issue i've been having that for actually like nine months but i haven't been feeling very good and those of you who have cfs and fibromyalgia one day we're going to die of a stroke or something because they just blow everything off for that well i insisted on my thyroid being checked and he did check it and it was off in june and he said let's check it in six months so we checked it in six months and still off so we're i'm having an ultrasound to see but i'm not feeling too spiffy today um, 
<laughs> Kathy says chopped up pickles are also good in cheeseburger soup. Wow, these are things we're gonna have to try. Okay, Dave, hand me the hand me the chopped up pickles. The, and the dill <clears throat> relish. And I have to say, uh, Patricia. Patricia has a great suggestion. She says, you know, another Top way shelf. to save money, if you don't drive a lot, don't buy expensive tires. Yeah. I saved almost no. $400 on a set of four new tires. So. Relish. Yep, dill relish. Sweet. Nope, dill. I, I found, especially since we usually drive older cars anyway, um, there are all kinds of exemption, ways that they'll, uh, they oftentimes will not honor the warranty. So. Hmm. Is it good? So it kind of resembles eating a... A high eating hamburger. A, eating a hamburger at the it lake. It would be heating a hamburger is what it would be. I was thinking about sitting, going out at a picnic <gasps> table, like Travis. I would love that. I love dill relish. That's probably one of my favorite condiments. In the summer, trying to keep the bee off your can of Coke. Mm. <laughs> that is that really tastes good. just like a hamburger. Yeah, it does. Holy cow, you guys, that's delicious. So that was the relish and the pickles would probably be about At the same. At first I was thinking you guys are crazy. You're not crazy. <laughs> wow, that's really good. Okay, throw in some dill relish or just pickle juice if you want. <laughs> uh, wow. Oh, so on the tires. Uh, Patricia said if you don't drive a lot, don't buy expensive tires. So for us, I found that a couple times I went in and there were exceptions on the warranty. And finally, I just started saying I, I would basically go in and buy the least expensive. In those days, I had to specify steel belted radials because they had glass ones that I didn't ever want. But um, now I think they all are steel. So I, we never buy anything more than the least expensive and we replace them every few years. And I think we drive a reasonable amount. So if you really, if you don't drive a lot, definitely, honestly, I'm not really sure that ever buying fancy tires is really worth it. Mm -hmm. So mainly yeah. you want to keep looking, you want to check your tires every now and then, because if you don't keep them inflated to the right amount, that can cause them to fail sooner. If you look at them and you see uh, cracks, big cracks, like little cracks are normal, but big cracks, um, sometimes they, they'll there'll like be almost a separation in it and you can see other stuff underneath it. That's really, really dangerous if it gets to where you can see, that's called a tread separation. And so otherwise, if you just keep, if you just uh, air them up and keep an eye on them and make sure that they're not too bad, I'd buy the cheap ones. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm wrong, but I thought SSI was state, not federal, but I might be wrong on that. I'm not thinking very well today, so maybe I'm wrong on that. Um, da, 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 da. Well, should I do a quick Google search? Music Mad. Huh, no, they can look it up themselves if they want to. Music Mad. Hubby thought if he didn't get half a cow on his plate at dinner time, he would he would die. He hasn't. He's still here. <laughs> he was really surprised when I let him in on the secret. That's true. I mean, just put a bigger baked potato and less meat on there. And all you diabetics out there, don't go emailing me or commenting. If you have a diabetic diet, you do what you need to do. But for the normal person, you can substitute, you know, like more potato instead of so much meat. It boils down to stop eating so much food. You're making excuses. Period. I have had gestational diabetes. I know all about what you're supposed to eat on diabetes, and it boils down to stop eating so much food. You can have the bread, just don't eat a half a loaf of bread. Anyway, that's all I'm going to say about that. But yeah. Um, I'm not sure, Allie, what exactly for sure your question is. Uh, if someone is giving an American money from Canada, how to do it because cash in Canadian money at the bank is a huge fee. I'm not really sure... We've had people send money uh, from Canada to here, and I know that there is a what looks like a big fee, but it's actually the, the it's an exchange rate. So it's not actually a fee. It's just that the money Canadian dollars and American dollars are are different amounts. So like yeah, 
It's ten, just the exchange rate. Ten Canadian dollars might be something like seven or eight American dollars. I haven't seen the rate lately, so if I'm wrong, don't quote yeah, me. Whatever it but is. but I don't know that. At least on our end, I don't know that there's an actual fee. There might be. Matthew, my wife is inheriting a large sum of money in coming months. Is it enough to buy? It is enough to buy a house. Would it be better to pay cash for a house or pay large amounts towards a house and put the rest on investments? Completely pay it all. Just buy it up front with cash. Here's the thing. You will never, ever, ever be rich as long as you have debt. You won't. And so what I would do is put all that money into your house because here's the thing. If the economy tanks, your investments are going to tank. But you will still have a house to live in. And you won't have to come up with as much money to pay for your taxes and insurance and all of that if your house is already paid off. Where if you put that money in investments and the economy tanks, how are you going to pay your house payment? So always, 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 if you have a choice, push towards debt free before investing. I know there's going to be people who say no, but let me tell you, it's the only way you're going to ever be rich is to totally be debt free. So, um, Stormy. Hi, Stormy. Stormy's with us. She hasn't been on for a while. I haven't seen you. Uh, I have many cans of veggies in the trunk of my car. They're for blessing boxes in town. Now we have had snow and snow. Are they still good to eat? So can you freeze and defrost canned goods? Do they get nasty after a while? Well, okay. I don't know how cold it got. I mean, if you got to like minus 15 or something and they froze, I honestly, I have no idea. You might just have to open one and see. I don't know. If anybody knows, comment and let us know. I don't know. Um, let's see what... <clears throat> yes, Kathy is right. Debt is slavery. Yeah. Well, and the thing is... I mean, is... the borrower is slave to the lender. And the wicked do not repay their debts. And I... So... I there are people out there that talk about leveraging debt to make money and I, I think for us we would rather have the house paid off because if like here in our town in Colorado when we first moved back here uh, in 2011 people had lost their houses because they were leveraging debt to keep it in investments or to just a lot of people are leveraging debt just to buy a lot of stuff they didn't need so uh, I think for us, we would rather have the house clear so that if something happens, we don't have to really worry about that. And when we did have a mortgage when we moved back here, but because we had significantly paid off our previous house, even though this one was more expensive, our mortgage was a great deal lower mm -hmm. than the ones that other people around us had. I mean, and even though we're looking at another house, we are trying our best to not have to go into another mortgage to do it. Now we might, we'll see. But we're going to get, if we have to get a mortgage, it's going to be the smallest mortgage we can possibly get because, you know, we just don't, we just don't want to have debt because it's just been beautiful. So. Actually, it's funny how much less stressful it is now that we've paid it off. Because for a long time we said we, we paid off everything but the house and the house it wasn't really that much, but for some reason, after paying it off completely, it just, it was a lot of relief. Yeah. So, uh, Aaron says, I'm wicked. I still have student loans. No, you're only wicked if you don't pay back your student loans. That's the only time you're wicked. If, well, yeah. If you're making yeah. Money, so I mean, stealing if you, then it's if just you stealing. If you like, we had one person and she claims she runs a website. She claims she makes $3 million a year. And she was looking for a house and she said, you know, I just can't get a house loan. And I kind of know this person. I said, well, why are you trying to get a house loan? I said, if you make $3 million a year, you're bringing home like 2 million. If you pay 30% taxes, you're bringing home 2 million. Let's say you've got $75,000 that you're living on. That still gives you a million and a half left to just blow. 
and buy a house. And she said, well, she said, I think the rapture's coming soon and we're all gonna be with Jesus and our money is just gonna go up in flames when, when the earth goes up in flames. And I was like, See, this person says she's a Christian. And I was like, seriously? Right? And it did not sit with me well. And I couldn't remember. I was like, why? I know debt is wrong, but why is having a mortgage okay? But why am I feeling so disturbed? And this is why. Because the wicked do not repay. The wicked borrow and do not repay. Uh, it's Proverbs somewhere. And... I thought that is why she is being wicked by intentionally borrowing money that she intentionally is not thinking she's going to have to pay back and that is wrong and that is sinning. So <laughs> well it's actually we've also we knew somebody in the past who had uh, who knew she was going to go bankrupt and decided to go on a spending spree prior to that yeah. and that also would be wrong. <laughs> Because yeah. bankruptcy is supposed to be a, yeah, yeah, an emergency well, type thing. Well, and Karen says no one can kick you out of your house if it's paid off. And Beth said unless you can't pay your taxes, that's true. But you have a much better chance of paying your taxes if you're not paying a mortgage too. Ooh. So yes, your house can be taken away if you're not paying your taxes. But. but but if it comes to that, here, um, try this. there's a certain period that you can redeem your house back for those okay. taxes. Uh, come that, here. Come here. I don't know exactly how that works, but I know there's that. Although, Cheeseburger honestly, soup. the taxes in most, well, in the places where we live, the taxes are low enough that it would definitely never let that become the issue. It's got potatoes, your favorite. Because we have noticed one thing that we've it's considered in places oh, we've stop. looked to, to buy houses. Um are what are the property taxes because we think you know someday i don't really see a day where i would expect to not do some sort of work but we always think well what if we decide just someday we, we don't want to work anymore we can't work or we're going to retire or whatever um at that point it'd be great to have the least amount of things that we have to pay and so like a property tax on your house you absolutely have to pay that a sales tax on goods, you only have to pay that if you buy stuff. So that's kind of why we look for lower property tax uh, over lower sales tax. Mm -hmm. But lower taxes in general, we tend to prefer. Rachel, we have very high property taxes here in New Jersey, so many can't afford the taxes even though their houses pay off. Yeah, well, and that's, I hate to say it, but that's what you get for voting the way you vote like that. I mean... It's it's coming. Look at California. That's why people can't afford to live in California. Um, you One know, thing, and in that situation, all you can do is move. So yeah, I was gonna say you can. A lot of times, different areas have well, different areas have different taxes. Different states have different taxes. In certain states, you know the taxes are gonna be a lot higher. And it, within certain states, the taxes might be lower in one area and higher in another. So if there's a lot of stuff like. Uh, if there are all kinds of improvement districts and you live close to a city and there's a light rail or whatever, they tax for all those things. And so anytime people vote for more things, that's going to raise taxes. Probably uh, some of those would be property taxes, but they could be other taxes too. So if you want to pay less taxes, it's good to be, it's good to look, like when you go to buy a house, you can actually look and find out what the yeah. estimated taxes are. And sometimes if you're just slightly outside of the town, the taxes are lower than elsewhere. Yeah. Well, and here in Colorado, that's one of the reasons why we're looking here in Colorado and Wyoming. Here in Colorado, a $600,000 house has the same taxes. So it's about $3,000 for a $600,000 house per year here in Colorado. That same house in Wisconsin would be $200 thousand dollars that same house in vermont it would be about um a hundred thousand dollars for the same three thousand dollars a month a year in taxes so in the end for us if we calculated if we stayed four years here where the houses are more expensive versus 40 years in wisconsin where the houses are less but the taxes are higher 
it would end up costing us about the same. I mean, we're talking about twenty-five to fifty thousand dollars. Well, that's negligible over a thousand dollars a year over forty years isn't hardly anything. So, yeah, mommy of anyway. six. I didn't see the beginning of the video. Is there bacon in the soup? Yep. Yes, there is. No, there's not. There's not. But oh. there can be if you oh, want. Oh, is it to. the alternative one? Yeah. Yeah. The alternative one has. There's bacon. not. But if you want to do um, bacon, then you can't. So I've been sharing the post for the cheeseburger soup recipe and there's another cheeseburger soup that Jill shared years ago and it does call for two yeah. slices of bacon. So. Well, and one thing I didn't finish my, my I didn't finish, but oh, one thing on the house payments, guys, if you pay your house off, then take all that money and you can invest all that money after you've paid off your house. So then instead of investing a thousand dollars a month and paying a house payment for a thousand dollars a month, you're investing two thousand dollars a month. Wow. So Diane says nine thousand a year for property taxes for a four hundred and twenty thousand house in southern New Hampshire. <clears throat> so our house is valued about that much in Colorado. I think um I want to say it's three thousand dollars a year for our taxes. Well, our tax no, ours are twice as much as the rest yeah, of the town. Yeah, our taxes are twice <clears> as much <throat> as the rest of Colorado because we have a special road district. Our taxes would be about fifteen hundred dollars here for a four hundred thousand dollar house if we didn't live in this particular neighborhood. Um. So anyway, okay. So guys, we're doing a giveaway. I am doing Dig Out of Debt. I've got one copy of this in print. It's in ebook form. I've got quick and easy menus. And then I have an old Dining on a Dime spiral here. I think I used this one on the show, so there might be a stain or two, although it's pretty clean. It might the be spiral new. spiral with the kind of bindery thing around it. Yeah. So if you guys want to win one of these books, I'll pick three winners. Um, it's put book wait, wait, is in this on YouTube, or Facebook? YouTube and Facebook, and I'll just go through and pick a couple people. All right, let's see. We've got more people on YouTube than Facebook, so I'll pick two on YouTube and one on Facebook, and then we will get done for the evening. Um, okay, and while we're doing that, yes, we have state income taxes in Colorado, so just take all of that into consideration when you're looking to move. Okay. All right, we've got YouTube. Let me see. YouTube number one. So this will be for quick and easy menus. Wow. Oh, holy cow. Right there. B. B. J. Holcomb. H O L C O M B. B. J. U. One. Quick and easy menus. Go to livingonadime.com. Give me your name and your address and that you won. Quick and easy menus, where, where click on the contact form. Okay, now the next one for, we'll do Dig Out of Debt on Facebook. Okay, we've got, woo, lots of people. Okay. Wow. Let me pick right there. Ricky Lucas, you won Dig Out of Debt. Woohoo. Ricky Lucas, go to Living on a Dime, click on the contact form. Give me your name and your address and that you won Dig Out of Debt. I didn't know we had those. I didn't know we had any printed ones. I'm cleaning. I guess I'm you getting are. ready to move. Hey, what, what about my kids? The Lord says Our you've gone kids. around this mountain enough Rejection times. It's too. time to move on. <laughs> we we saved a box of books for you guys', you guys. kids. Oh. Not that you guys will care. I mean, we might. When not. we die, you guys are gonna say, "How much can we auction these off on eBay?" And you'll be like, "Well, we can bail for a house, all right." <laughs> wow, so. you sell for a million bucks a piece, dude. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> Dining on a Dime cookbooks are 25% off in our store right now, right before, including our gluten-free, dairy-free, 25% off all of our cookbooks. So if somebody doesn't win this old edition. All right, here we go. On YouTube, we've got, let me look, I'm going to see, boom. Step, oh. Sephardi Shalom. Sephardi, okay, are you in America? It needs to be in the U.S. So, email me, editor at livingonadime.com. 
click on the contact. If you're in the U.S., if you're not, then we'll do another drawing next week, but it needs to be in the U.S. So send me your name and your address and that you won Dining on a Dime. Please visit us at livingonadime.com, guys. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Thanks for joining oh, us. Was that quick? That okay. was quicker than I thought. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I guess I like bye. Oh, sorry. It's <laughs> bye, been great having everyone. you here, guys. Let me hold her up for the last couple seconds.